It's great worshiping God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us now go to the word of God. Amen. 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 What a privilege to have him. He's our father. Jehovah God of Israel. Let's open up our Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 16. We're going to read a very common scripture this morning. The book of Matthew chapter 16, we read from verse 13 down to 18. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 until verse 18. If you are there, we can read in the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and the others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. 15. He said to them, But who do you say? that I am. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the reading of the word of God. Father, we thank you for this wonderful moment in your presence. We thank you, Lord Almighty God, for the heavenly atmosphere and for your glory, for your tangible glory in this place. Here we want to hear your word, Lord Almighty God. We open up our hearts that you may speak unto us through your word. May you strengthen our faith through your word, almighty God, and bless us this morning as we share your word. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us again this time as we desperately wait on you and expect to receive from above this morning. Father God, anoint your word and bless this time. We subject under authority every plans of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you, Spirit of God, open up our spiritual understanding that we may understand your word, that it may change our lives, bless our lives. Bless us in this place and bless this time, we pray in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak from a subject this morning, how to know God better. Amen? Amen. How to know God better. But I'm going to use two words throughout the sermon, the word knowledge and the word believing. Belief. Amen. We are living in unprecedented times where we need to ensure that our faith is grounded in God alone, amen? amen, and in his word. Because the times we are living in today are very different, amen? The last two years have been very different to the other years we've lived before, amen? And talking that we need to ensure that our faith is grounded in God, you, you, you know, we do not receive faith only to receive miracles. We don't have faith only to receive miracles or to receive things from God. But we also have faith to sustain us in difficult situations, in difficult times. Amen. There is a fight right now that is going on across the world. about what you believe in. (laughs) 
opinion is divided across people about what things people believe in. <laughs> people in the same family do not believe in the same thing today. <laughs> Friendships are breaking. Families are breaking up. Relationships are breaking up because of what people believe in. <laughs> people have got different beliefs about the vaccine today, the COVID-19 vaccine. And we've seen and heard families breaking apart because the husband does not believe in the vaccine, the wife believes in the vaccine. Friendships are breaking apart because of what people believe in. <laughs> See, we've got to wear masks today. <laughs> Some people are still skeptical about the whole idea of the pandemic <laughs> and the things that need to take place. <laughs> you know? <laughs> have you heard stories of friends who have broken apart? <laughs> because I believe in the vaccine or I don't believe in the vaccine and my friend believes or does not believe in the vaccine, they choose to break apart from me. <laughs> there is a fight going on right now across the globe about what you believe in and about what you do not believe in. <laughs> We've had in, in, in the last few years in Australia a referendum to decide about whether we should redefine marriage. It's an example. And some people believe that marriage needs a new definition <laughs> from what some people, from what the world knew for over all these years. People, some people today believe in a marriage of a man with a man, a woman with another woman. Others say, no, we don't believe in that kind of a marriage. You see, denominations today, religions today, you see, religious groups today are breaking apart because of other things that we believe in and other things that we do not believe in. Especially as believers or servants of God, we are, you see, we are receiving questions. <laughs> People asking us, is your church believing in the same-sex marriage? When you say no, someone will tell, but the other church is believing in it. If you say yes, someone will tell you, but the other church is not believing in it. So there is a fight going on right now across the globe over what people believe in and over what people do not believe in. Amen. <laughs> and most of the times when we come across such things, we focus, we try, <laughs> we try and focus on changing people's behaviors. Oh. <laughs> because you begin wondering, why is my friend not believing in wearing masks? Why is my husband not believing in me getting my vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine? <laughs> I will try by all means to see if I can change my wife's behavior so she understands that I need to take the vaccine or not taking it or believing in the same-sex marriage or not believing in it. So I will focus much of my efforts trying to change someone's behavior. But I need, brethren, you to consider with me that you cannot change your behavior until you have changed your belief. Did you get that? You, can, <laughs> you cannot change your behavior until you have changed your belief system. Oh, 
I remember growing up as a child, you know. I always say that I grew up in the village. You know, we didn't have much of the stock, as much of the things in plenty stocks in the house. We had to go to the market every day and buy sugar and things like that that we needed for the house. And as a young boy, sometimes you'll be tempted because you love to, 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 to chew sugar. You run when mom has gone to the market, you go in the kitchen and you steal some sugar. <laughs> and when mom comes back, she notices that Amos, I, I left a whole full thing of sugar here. Where did it go? <laughs> no, it is not me. No, I know you like sugar. She would have grabbed me and give me a few sticks. <laughs> so she's trying to see if it's, she can help change my behavior. I'm sure. And I believe that most of us went through that process. Not only me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you went behind your mom and grabbed a few pieces of meat in the uh, pot. <laughs> and when mom comes, you know, as I'm saying in the village, you always count things. I left the 10 pieces here. <laughs> so Amos, you were the one who were left home. You have grabbed one piece of meat. No, it's me, come here, a few sticks. <laughs> Another week, mom is away. It's not about meat or sugar. Another week, it will be something else. I, oh. <laughs> and mom is trying to give me a few sticks to try and change my behavior. But I don't think I would. <laughs> and can I tell you, the more I'm used to the sticks, the more I don't mind anymore. Because sticks become just a habit. Because I love, you see, sucking sugar. <laughs> I would rather <laughs> go through the pain of 10 sticks than missing sucking sugar. How do you call it in uh, Bemba? Oh, Chigolo. <laughs> Zigolo. <laughs> I would rather suffer 10 sticks than missing Zigolo. Because Zigolo makes my energy up for soccer. I used to love soccer, you see? <laughs> But that did not help mom to change my behavior. Mom needed to do something to help me change my behavior, not the sticks. <laughs> you cannot change my behavior until I change my belief system because what I believe about God will affect how I behave. What I believe about myself will impact how I do things. What you believe about other people will affect how you relate to others. <laughs> now, when I was growing up, the thing that helped me most, maybe when mom shifted her focus and trying to sort of, maybe she gives me two sticks instead of ten sticks, then she tells me, Amos, do you know that stealing is a sin? <laughs> she would tell me, do you know that we are a Christian family? And when we read the Bible, the Bible tells us that when you steal, you are committing sin. And when I go to the, 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 school, the, the, to the school, uh, to the Sunday school, they teach me that when you steal, it is a sin. Then when my faith began growing into the word of God, be, ah, oh, no, today I'm not doing zig, uh, zigolo. <laughs> because if I steal sugar, I'm committing sin. Then helped my behavior because I began believing in something <laughs> because I began changing my belief system into something that I, I learned that if you do this it's not only going to affect your physical life but it's going to affect your spiritual life as well then change began happening Amen. It's like when you, it's most of the times you hear some parents who say that this child is demon possessed. I'll grab a stick and hit you until that demon run out of you. <laughs> but unfortunately, the bad news is that demons do not listen, do not feel sticks. It's like why Jesus, <laughs> when this man comes with his child to Jesus and tells Jesus that, Jesus, your disciples failed to heal my son. And Jesus tells the disciples that you, when they ask him, why have we not casted out this demon? Jesus tells them that this kind of a demon does not de only de 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 pass by prayer and fasting. 
So demons can not listen to sticks. But when you pray over demons, demons will hear and run away. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not change your behavior until your belief system has been changed. Now, interestingly, now, let's bring this into a spiritual reality. Amen? Why faith matters. Why your belief system matters is very important. Your belief system is, is the battleground for both God and the devil. Are you hearing that? Both God is after your faith and the devil is after your faith. Amen? <laughs> now you see in God's divine redemption plan, he has provided faith as a means through which mankind will be saved. Amen? Amen? In his redemptive plan, God provided faith as a mechanism through which mankind will be saved. We, we are not saved through our intellectualism. Because if that was the case, God has created some of us clever than others. Like when it comes to mathematics, I'm dumb. You see? You see? Brother Muzo is excellent in math. Now, if you see, his intellect is strong in, in calculations. Now, if God made that, we, we will hear him through our intellectualism. He wouldn't have been fair in some capacity. He wouldn't have been fair. Because with someone who struggles to understand fractions and things like that, I would have struggled maybe to understand issues about believing in God and the other things. So God made it an equal thing that he provided something through which mankind should be saved. And this is what we call faith. <laughs> faith. So this is why you hear he says in, in, in John 3.16 that, for so God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes. <laughs> you know, the greatest sin is unbelief. Because when we will be standing at the throne judgment of God, we will be judged according to our faith in Jesus or not believing in him. Because John 3:18, the Bible says, or 19, that. The world will be condemned because it did not believe in the Son of God. So unbelief is the greatest. Unbelief, not believing in the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is the greatest sin. So this is why faith plays an important role in spiritual life. Amen? 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 Do you know how I was talking about behavior and things? My faith, I'll be judged according to my faith. Amen? Behaviors will come after. Amen? God is going to judge me like me. I am a believer. I believe in God. Amen? So my behaviors will be judged after my faith in God. Amen? As compared to someone who rejected Jesus and never believed in him. So this is why the issues about faith are, are very crucial with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For whoever believes shall be saved. And whosoever does not believe shall be condemned for eternity. Amen. Amen. And you will see this starts right from the, you see, you see, from the beginning in Genesis. <laughs> your faith, your system belief is the battleground. You read Genesis 3, the Bible says that the serpent came to the woman and 
asked the woman, has God said that you shall not eat from the fruit of this garden? <laughs> what is the devil looking for here? The devil is not trying to move, to physically move Adam and Eve out of the garden. But he is trying to move them away from what they believe in. Because automatically he understands that when he moves them away from what they believe in, then he has power over them. He catches them. Oh, Spirit of God. <laughs> now, brethren, the devil is not after your car. When your car is stolen, Brother Muzo, the devil is not after your car. <laughs> because you won't see the devil on Ipswich Road or driving your car. You say, oh, that's my, oh, the devil is driving my car. <laughs> no, you won't see. You see the devil driving your car on Dexter Street. No. <laughs> the devil will not drive your car. No. <laughs> he has just stolen it so you are upset. So you feel weary and tired and disappointed about some of the things you believe in. <laughs> you see, when God, the devil enters your marriage to break it, uh, when you divorce your wife, the devil is not interested in your wife. You won't see the devil having a house and is married to your wife or to your husband. No. He doesn't need your wife. He doesn't need your husband. The devil does not need your job. When he brings challenges at your workplace to the point that you are sacked, the devil, you will not see the devil at your office doing work. No. He does not need your work. <laughs> what is the devil after is after your belief system. <laughs> the devil is after you. Has God said you will truly not eat from this garden, from the fruits of this garden? <laughs> the devil is attacking what they know about, what they believe in. <laughs> Amen. 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 This is what the devil is attacking, brethren. And whatever situation you may be going through as a believer right now, the devil is not interested in whatever it is. The devil is coming against your faith. The devil is coming against what you believe in. Trying to see if you can change your mind and believe into his lies. As he is the father of all lies. All his messages are lies. He has never spoken the truth. Hallelujah. He has never spoken the truth. He speaks lies. Amen. Amen. So you need to be very much aware that what you might be going through as an individual, as, as a church, it, is, it has nothing to do with what we are seeing physically. It has something to do with our faith. It has something to do with our faith. And we come to God through faith, not through our intellectualism, as I said. Because we are all different, amen? Amen. At my age, the way I understand things is different from the way Leme understands things. Amen? If that was the mechanism through which we come to God, then, you see, it, it, it is not fair. Amen? But as long as Leme has faith in God, he's saved. As long as I have faith in God, I am saved. Amen? And this is the treasure that both God and the devil is looking after. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. The problems you are experiencing are just mechanisms, channels, ways, strategies of the devil to try and see if he can sneak in and impact your faith in God. 
the disease and sicknesses are mechanisms of the devil trying to challenge your faith in God. Amen. Remember how the devil brings Jesus on the top of the temple and he asks Jesus, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. <laughs> can you see how cunning he is? Why should I risk even when God, I know that God is looking after me? I, I, I should not do it. Why should I go and cross the road when I see the cars crossing? Because God is looking after me. I should wait for the cars to pass by and then I cross. Amen. Amen. Now the devil is telling me now, Amos, you cross over these cars so that when the cars hit me, <laughs> I become paralyzed. Then someone will find an opportunity to laugh at me. Look now, the pastor with one leg. <laughs> we'll see if he's going to go to Morocco and preach again. <laughs> <laughs> and when I hear those <laughs> mockeries and things, I might lose faith in my God and start questioning God. God, why have you not protected me when I was crossing Ipswich Road with these cars? No, 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 no. God has showed me that there were cars traveling. I needed to wait for the cars to pass by. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Jesus comes. Let's now come back to the test that we have read. Amen? So we can see and explore a few things here from the word of God. Amen? Now the gospel, so now Jesus comes with the gospel. So the gospel is designed the gospel is presented to us as a means <laughs> through which we believe in. Amen? So the gospel is designed to give you and me a new belief system. Amen? Hallelujah? Amen? That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come and died for our sins, and whosoever believes in him shall be saved. Amen? So this is the meaning of the gospel. It is presented to us. It is introduced. It has been designed to give us a new belief system. Amen. And here you listen to this incident, to this conversation between Jesus and his disciples. And the theologians, Bible scholars, believe that this conversation, this story we have read in here in the Word of God that took place six months prior to Jesus' crucifixion. That's what theologians believe in say. Amen? Now you can understand how critical this time was for Jesus himself. Amen? If that was the case. Amen? If that was a time leading to him being sacrificed and die on the cross. Amen? Now, you can understand what is going on in the mind of God here. Hallelujah. When he comes and asks his disciples, amen. When he asks the disciples that, what do you think that I am? Amen. What do you think people say about me? Amen. And the disciples, as we read the Bible, they said, they answered him saying that some people say that you are John the Baptist. Others say you are Prophet Jeremiah. Others say you are one of these other prophets. Amen. 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 But Jesus asks them, Let's forget about what people talk about me. What you, my disciples, say that I am. <laughs> Amen. Now you can understand these are people that Jesus is relying on. Amen. The people he's going to use 
Amen. As instruments to build his church. Amen. After he has departed, ascended to heaven, this is the team he's preparing. He's going to live on this earth to build his church. Amen. Now you can understand how important this conversation is with the people who are following him. Amen. You can understand how many times, how crucial he wants to ensure that these people truly understand and acknowledge him and know him and who he is with them and for them. Amen. Amen. Now people say that I am a prophet. People say that I am John Baptist. But who do you say that I am? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I say that, what you believe about God will affect how you behave and how you do things. Amen? We have said that people have got different beliefs today. Amen? Hallelujah! Amen! What is if your friend does not believe in attending church? Would you stop church as well because your friend is not believing in attending church? No. Amen. What is if your friend does not believe in prayers or something else that you believe in about God? Would you stop it because your friend has said so? What do you do if your family is forbidding you not to follow Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Would you stop following Jesus because your family is not believing in God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Jesus says, ask the disciples, what do you say that I am? Amen. Amen. So the disciples have given him an answer based on what they have heard from other people. Amen. They say that people say. <laughs> Amen. They say that people say that you are. Amen. Brethren, you cannot follow God. You cannot follow Jesus Christ based on what other people say. Amen. You've got to follow him based on what you believe about God yourself. Amen. Because that grounds you in. That makes you stand strong regardless of the challenges that may come around you. Amen. This is why Jesus asked them, how about you? What do you say about me? What do you believe in about me? Not about what you have heard the community talking about me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are a prophet. Amen. So Jesus is trying to sort of build in their faith on the right foundation. Amen. Because he understands that and knowing that he is preparing his death. Amen. He needs to ensure that his disciples will firmly and strongly Stand for the gospel. Stand for the good news. Stand for the message. Stand for the salvation they have received. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will not do it with God based on what someone else is saying. Based on what someone else's feeling is believing in. Amen? It has to do to be what you as a believer believe in about God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> then you'll be able
able to stand against the challenges from your community, from society, from your friends, from your family, when you are grounded in the true knowledge of the word of God. Amen. When you know it and when you believe in it. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, you will see here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, and Jesus has different ways of getting us people believing in him. Oh, come on, church. You are very quiet this morning. <laughs> God has better ways and different ways to strengthen our faith in him. He does it in different ways. I loved the preacher last Friday. He said that heroes are made out of the battleground. Great people, champions, are made, are fashioned out of the battleground. That's one of the ways God strengthens our faith. Amen. Oh, that revelation sustained me through this weekend. <laughs> yes. Amen. You see, the people we are reading about here, they were made through battlegrounds. Amen? They were made through hardships and difficult moments. Amen? 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 And until your belief system has been changed, you will see Peter. You remember Peter when he... he, he oh, God is great. I, I don't know. When he... he I'm not sure. Before he received the true revelation of the Son of God, you remember how he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know this man. <laughs> Peter, you, you speak like this man. No. <laughs> Peter, your language, your speech. <laughs> Looks like you live with this man. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Bino, you, 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 sing, you sing like Pastor Amos. You might be Pastor Amos' brother. No, I don't know him. No, you are. <laughs> Hallelujah! And I wonder if I was there trying to change Peter's behaviors. I was not going to help it. Peter needed something in order to stand his ground. Ah, you hear in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, when Peter stands boldly and the family, when the, 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 you see, when the rulers of Israel are forbidding Peter and John not to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, Peter says that, oh, he tells them that, who, who do you think you are? Do you think we should stop preaching the gospel, listening to you and not listening to the message that we have received from Jesus Christ? Amen. Peter needed something until his behavior is changed. This time, he's standing for the man he denied. But I was trying to say that God has different ways to sort of strengthen our faith to get us believe in him. And the other way, amen, God performs miracles so that we can believe in him. Oh, brethren. Amen. <laughs> when God performs miracles, he does not need a miracle. He's a supreme God. He's the creator. God performs a miracle for your own sake. So that you can believe in him. Amen. God does not need a healing. You are the one who is sick and needs a healing. When God performs a healing in your body, it is for your own sake. So that you believe that there is a God that heals people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Jesus is trying to bring the disciples' faith, the disciples' understanding into a common platform of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you hear everyone has given his own answer. I don't know who said that. Oh, people say you, you are John the Baptist. Someone else said you are Prophet Jeremiah. Someone else said, it sounds to me that 
disciples at this point in time had different understandings and beliefs about the men they were following. Amen. <laughs> but God appears to us in miraculous ways so that we can believe in him. Amen. 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 You hear when he's in the boat with his disciples, he's sleeping and the boat is tossed by the waves of the sea. The disciples are waking him up. Master, we are perishing. When he wakes up, he rebukes the wind and the wind stops. Then the disciples ask themselves, what kind of a man is this one? To the extent that even the winds of the sea obey him. <laughs> Do you think, is this the team that Jesus was going to leave to build the church? No. <laughs> you can only stand for me if you believe in me. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. When you are passing by and you hear people are saying that, oh, Brother Amos has stolen someone's car. If you truly believe in Brother Amos, that, I know that brother is a believer. I, you will struggle believing in that news. When you believe that I am a believer in God, you will struggle to believe. No, I know that brother, I know he's got his own issues, but I don't think he has stolen the car. <laughs> because you believe that I am a believer, that I am a Christian, that I am a son of God. But when you know me that, oh, he's just another pastor, when you hear the news, you, oh, yeah, I know he can do it, that guy. <laughs> well, do you know that? No, 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 no. That brother is the servant of God. I, I know he's got his, his struggling in other ways of his spirituality and faith in God, but not to this point. He did not kill someone. <laughs> Amen. Now, do you think that this is the type of the team that Jesus was going to leave to sort of establish the church? People who are still asking themselves, what kind of a man is this one? <laughs> they don't know him yet. They are following him, but at some point, to some extent, I'm sure, they, there are still rooms of doubts and things in them. <laughs> now, you will listen now. Now, when you read Matthew chapter 14, amen. Now, when Jesus comes walking on the waters towards the disciples, when they are again facing the winds in the waters. And the Bible says that early in the morning, Jesus is walking on the waters. Oh. And again, because they have not yet believed in him strongly, they thought it was a ghost. <laughs> ah, Jesus, they thought it was a ghost. He, it is not a ghost. It is the spirit of God. It is, it is not the evil spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Again, because they were not expecting him. Because their faith was not ready for him. They are thinking of a demon visiting them. <laughs> it is Jesus' power visiting your life. Amen. Amen. And when he draws near them, Peter acknowledges it with Jesus it's when he says, it, it is I, do not fear. And Peter says, command me, Lord, if it is you, command me that I come to you. And Jesus tells him, Peter, come! Oh! And Peter jumps out of the boat. And Matthew and John are saying, look at this guy, what is he trying to do? <laughs> I wonder, James is trying to think, what does he think he is? <laughs> but by faith, upon the word come, Peter jumps out of the boat. He's walking on the water. Come on! <laughs> we talk about Peter's unbelief and fear, but we never spoke that it is, only, it is the only man who walked on the waters after Jesus. We can only see his, the <laughs> his lack of faith in this area at this point in time, but we never spoke about his boldness, his courage to step out of the boat and start walking on the waters. Amen. 
And when he looks at the waves of the sea, he starts thinking, oh, church of God. <laughs> when he looks at the waves of the sea, he starts thinking. Then he starts screaming, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus says, Peter, why do you have little faith, Peter? I had already commanded you to walk on the waters. Why have you shifted your focus from me to the waters? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I know your challenges are scary, are many. But fix your focus on Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because the moment you take your focus off Jesus, then you start sinking. Amen. Ensure you are fixated on following Jesus Christ. Amen. Because when your faith is focused on him alone, I know, I know you are going through, you see, things, very challenging things, moments and situations. But the more you remain focused on Jesus Christ, the more you will walk on top of those challenges. But the more you shift your focus of Jesus and start looking at who is talking against you, who is criticizing you negatively, you, at the end of the day, <laughs> be brought into the discussion of quarreling and fighting. Why have you said negatively about me? Let them talk negatively about you. But you focus. Go ahead continue moving with Jesus Christ. Now, so the point that I'm trying to make here, now, when Jesus and Peter got back into the boat, this is a key point here that I want to sort of summarize in relation to the message that I'm sharing this morning. The Bible says that, amen? So remember how in Matthew chapter 8, verse 24, when Jesus rebuked the winds, they asked one another that who what kind of a man is this one? And at the first verse we read in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, when they are saying, or, or 17, that someone says you are John the Baptist and so, 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 so. They had different understandings and different levels of faith about who was Jesus. But after this miracle, the Bible shows us that, the Bible says in, in Matthew um, 14, that all of them, that the disciples say that truly, <laughs> now we come to understand that you are the son of the living God. Amen. We truly now understand that you are the son of God. As a common team, as a one group, we truly now believe that you are the Son of God. Brethren, God performs miracles to build your faith up in Him. Amen. To build your faith up in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly you are. They come to a common understanding of who Jesus is in their midst. Truly, we are dealing, we are living with the son of the living God. And I believe that someone's perception, someone's understanding has changed about who God was and about who Jesus was. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And after this time now, this is when you can see people like Peter and John, they are now standing firmly and strongly. Regardless of whatever challenges they are facing, they are able to say that we have no need to listen to you, but to apply and do what we have learned and received from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Knowing and believing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
And this is why it is even us as a church, as a body of Christ, amen? The church is strengthened and built up on the revelation of knowing who God is in our midst, who God is in our lives, amen? Amen? And, and when you know so, as I started saying that, there is a whole fight going on around the world today about what you believe in, amen? Because people know that there is power in what you believe in. Amen? Because, about, oh, come on. What we believe about Jesus Christ, about God, will truly affect how you live your life. Amen? Regardless of whether there are strict rules and things about what you believe about God will really impact the way you live your life. Amen? In your family, in your community, in the society. Amen? Amen? And this is all what the devil is after. It is your faith in God. Amen? The devil is fighting against your faith in God. Nothing more, nothing less. Amen? The devil is not interested in my finances or whatever. He will do it, he will trigger it as a way of trying to sort of upset me, challenge me, make me feel sad and distressed, and start doubting about the greatness of God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Amen. 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 But tell the devil that you have seen God. Because your life today is a miracle. If it was not Jesus Christ, I don't think you would have been here today. Amen. I know we are praying for miracles. Even the other miracle that we can talk about today, your life today is a miracle from God. Amen. How many people have died from COVID this year or last year? And from other, so many other things. But the Lord God has spared you. Amen. How many people have gone to bed at night and never woke up in the morning? We've had so many stories of people who went to sleep and never woke up. What tells you that it is morning that you, are, you need to wake up? <laughs> you just sleep as a dead body, as a dead thing. It is God's miracle that, whoa, it is 6 a.m., like today, <laughs> I woke up and, and grabbed my phone. I didn't know what time it was. I'm calling Elder Musa. Brother Musa, what time is it? You know how time has changed from Queensland to New South Wales and the other thing? <laughs> Mama, you know, it's my phone is showing me a different. And then, oh, God, I'm late for church. I grabbed my phone. Elder Musa, what time is it? <laughs> it doesn't mean relax, Pastor, calm down. It's still 7 a.m. Thank you. I still have time to go and take my shower and prepare for church. What made me come back and say it is 7 a.m.? It is God's miracle. Amen. 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 What do I have which I did not receive from him? Even the breath that I'm using right now to speak, it is coming from God. Amen. Amen. What do you have which you have not received from him? Hallelujah. Look at yourself and you can see God's greatness and love and grace working through your life. Amen. 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 Remain and remain and remain only fixated upon him. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. He has begun our faith. He will bring it to accomplishment. Amen. Amen. Regardless of the challenges of the day for on our way, the one who began our faith, he will truly finish it. Amen. Ignore what is happening around you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ignore what is happening. I remember the man of Jairus in the Bible. He comes with his child to Jesus. Amen. That Jesus, my child is dead. Amen. Now he comes, him alone. 
begging Jesus about his dead child. My child is dead. Come and heal my child. And the people who came from his house, they said to Jairus, why are you bothering Jesus? Your son is dead already. <laughs> Your son is dead already. Stop bothering Jesus. And Jesus said to Jairus, ignore what they are saying. <laughs> I know your son is alive. He's <laughs> Hallelujah! Ignore the preaching of the devil. Ignore whatever is coming, is happening around your life right now. And look, and look, and look alone unto Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. The one that has called you is faithful. Amen. Has never begun something that he will never end. When he starts something, he will truly bring it to an end. Amen. <laughs> he, will, he has never begun something. Hey, come on. He has never begun something that he will leave it halfway. No. In fact, when he begins it, he has already finished it. <laughs> When he began your faith, when he began your life, he had already finished your life. Amen. God knew already that in 2019, 2020, 2021, we will be living through the pandemic called the COVID-19. Amen. And there... <laughs> this is why I am not scared of the pandemic. Because the pandemic, it is not going to kill me. Nah, come on, oh, someone is looking at me and saying, oh, this brother is blaspheming. No, no, I'm saying the truth. <laughs> the pandemic will not kill me. Because if the pandemic kills me, then it is putting a stop to the promises of God about my life. Oh, come on, church, help me preaching now. Oh. <laughs> ah! Ah, come on. <laughs> If the pandemic kills you, what happens to those promises of God about your life? Sister Memphis, why are you afraid of it? Come on! <laughs> what happens to the promises God said? When it kills you, then it, it will make God to be a liar. When he, is, he has never lied. He's not a son of man that he should lie. That he should repent from what he has promised. His promises are yes and yes and amen him. Amen. Ignore them. Ignore it. Ignore what is happening. Just live your life as if there was no pandemic. <laughs> when people are questioning my belief about what I believe in and what I don't believe in, I just ignore them. It's good to hear you believe in what it is. I believe in something else. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's good to believe that you are believing in something to protect you. I believe in God to protect my life. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> come on, even sometimes scientists are confused. <laughs> They will tell you that, yeah, you take it, but it will not protect it 100%. <laughs> then I'm asking, what's the point of doing it? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to go deep, amen. I just want to finish here. Oh, this is why God is supreme. God is great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you say that Jesus is for your life? Amen. Amen. All we need to do, brethren, is continue praying and asking him the same way the apostles asked Jesus that, Lord Jesus, strengthen our faith. Amen. Amen. Strengthen our faith. Amen. 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 Our faith is not blind. We truly acknowledge that the times we are living in are difficult times. For sure, we can feel it, we can see it, but we are believing in, in a great God than what we are experiencing as challenges, as difficult times. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All we can pray about today is to pray that God strengthen our faith in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you have no faith in God, this is your day today. Amen. Amen. If you've never believed Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior of your life, this is your lifetime opportunity. 
to believe in him and tell him, Jesus, I receive you. Come into my life and be the Savior and the Lord of my life. Amen? Can we stand up on our feet as we want to pray?